Welcome, I'm Sean Wurzbach and I lead the financial advisor team at S&P Dow Jones Indices. Today we're discussing purpose-based asset allocation strategies and I'm with Larry Whistler, he's president and chief investment officer at an RIA Nottingham Advisors in upstate New York. Now Larry, it's great to be with you today. Uh, one of the things that, that your firm talks about is being able to specialize in asset allocation for the client's particular goals and needs. How do you, how do, you do that? Sure, thanks, Sean. It's great to be here today. Uh, so we work with both the advisor partners and direct clients. Mm -hmm. All of our direct clients have an individual investment policy statement that they fill out. So it's both a risk-based and objective-based questionnaire that helps determine exactly the, the investment profile that's suitable for that client. Uh, basically, ETFs allow us to fine-tune our investment approach for each individual client. We have broad models. We run a little bit over a billion dollars, and about 60% of that is geared towards individual high net worth type clients, about 40% institutional. And each of our strategies uh, is tailored to a certain risk level and objective for that client. Uh, ETFs are uh, the perfect tool in our, in our mind to pursue an index-based strategy for these clients. Uh, our models are built around macro views. Um, basically, we assess world conditions, the economy, and then formulate that into an investment strategy. Uh, and again, uh, each of our clients um, has an individual uh, objective, but that can be fit into one of our models. Um, we have about uh, five different uh, investment strategies that we pursue. Uh, we take a core satellite approach. So the core of the portfolio is really built around a market-based uh, or market cap weighted uh, structure that gives exposure to multiple asset classes around the world. Right. Uh, and we also have a tactical sleeve that is uh, a little bit more temporal in nature, uh, shorter time horizons for the holdings, but allow us to uh, take shorter term, more tactically oriented trades, positions, whether they're style tilts or sector plays or country plays, uh, or utilizing factor-based ETFs, and thing, things like that. Okay, well that's a great lead in to go uh, down into that asset allocation. And I'd love to ask you from like an equity perspective, are you finding an index-based approach or an ETF-based approach to be effective to deliver core solutions? Or you, you talked about style. Even if you look at something like lowering volatility, are you finding the solutions that you need from an index-based approach within equity? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. ETFs are an incredibly uh, effective vehicle for us to express our view on equities. Uh, or fixed income, or uh, more so uh, the broad asset classes, not as much in the alternative space we found yet, although that's evolving, yeah. but an incredibly effective vehicle for us to express our view on equities. Uh, there's over 500 ETFs offering some exposure to the equity market. So within that universe, we can find uh, those that are suitable for a core position, and the things we look to for that are uh, primarily expense ratio. Um, again, like I said, we're market cap weighted with our exposure yeah. uh, primarily. So if we can find broad, diverse, transparent, low cost uh, ETFs that will give us exposure to both the U.S. equity market as well as international markets developed and emerging, um, then that's, that's suitable for our core. Our tactical strategies uh, typically expense ratio is a little less important because our time frame for holding that is going to be a little bit shorter. Right. And it's really more the, the purity, that the ETF that gives us the exact exposure that we want, whether it's a, a currency hedged uh, exposure to international markets uh, or whether it's a play on volatility uh, or a sector or style. Uh, there is an ETF for it and there's more coming out every week. Right. So you would consider a style approach to be part of the tactical approach? Uh, in overweight, sure. Uh, yeah. our, our core tends not to change too much during the, the course of a year. We run some mean variance optimization every year, and we use the Black Letterman model, and not to get too wonkish uh, around it, but that's what really sets, sets our core. And we don't tend to touch it, uh, for the most part, during the year. We'll run it again at the end of every year. Uh, so that really informs our macro view on the core. Again, broad exposure to multiple asset classes. Um, our tactically driven trades are developed throughout our uh, investment process where we meet every week with our investment policy committee 
and we'll uh, constantly monitor sectors, styles, countries, different themes, uh, macroeconomic themes uh, around the globe and figure out if there's a trade to be had there, um, what the time frame of that trade is, what the catalyst might be to take us from A to B, and then is there an ETF that's available that will help us express our view um, and as I said, there's more and more ETF product coming out every week. Right. Um, and it gives us more and more opportunities to take on positions and trades and uh, implement shorter term tactical trades. And within fixed income, are you finding the same thing in terms of being able to find both core and tactical positions in ETFs? Absolutely, absolutely. There's over 200 uh, US listed fixed income ETFs out there uh, right now. From our core perspective, uh, typically, we would want some broad exposure, whether it be something like AG or you know, Vanguard's version BND. Mm -hmm. um, very low cost, very broad exposure. Uh, and then we can tweak that a little bit if we want to lean towards credit by adding in, say, bank loans or high yield. Uh, whether we want to take a play on international bonds, whether it be emerging market, either local currency debt or U.S. dollar-based debt. Uh, or something just broad sovereign like BNDX, which gives you exposure sure. to international uh, bonds. So th there are multiple bonds, and, and uh, not to jump ahead, but uh, we were talking earlier about some things like uh, target date investing with bonds and yeah. controlling for duration. There's a lot of product out there, too, around yeah. that. I definitely want to get into more depth uh, probably in the second video that we shoot on that. We can go into more depth on that. But you, you've definitely expressed that you're looking globally for opportunities as well as having that exposure as part of core. Mm -hmm. When you see a theme, uh, like let's say inflation, for example, are you able to express what your views are as CIO with ETFs to help you either take advantage of a theme or to manage the risk around a theme? Yeah, increasingly we are with ETFs. I would say a lot of our clients Many of our uh, institutional clients have unique mandates that require the use of individual bonds, whether okay. it's uh, income-driven, total return-driven, asset liability matching. There may be something unique that requires individual bond portfolios to be constructed, but increasingly we're seeing within the index world ETFs that will allow us to achieve the same exposure right. through a, a more liquid ETF as we have growing liquidity concerns around, say, the corporate bond market. Um, ETFs are, I think, a really good vehicle to, uh, to take, uh, to express a view in the fixed income space where liquidity might be a concern. Uh, you want diversification, which high yield uh, is a great example of that, uh, rather than doing, uh, having to do the, uh, do the credit work on every single high yield bond out there. You can own something like HYG or JNK or SJNK and get really broad exposure to that space. Same can be said for bank loans. Right. Um, so uh, with respect to inflation, um, there's plenty of inflation uh, adjusted product out there, things like TIP or STIP or WIP. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say there's an ETF for almost every circumstance. Uh, and again, the product evolution is continuing. Right. Now as your views change as, as CIO and, and you're implementing those changes, how are you communicating that to advisors that may be working with you or with direct clients? Uh, we communicate a lot with our both our advisor partners and our direct clients. That's a promise from day one. And so it's really uh, high on a list of our priorities to uh, not only discuss these uh, themes and ideas internally, but also make sure that our clients understand what it is we're talking about. So we take multiple approaches. Uh, we have a weekly piece that goes out that's just a brief market update. At the end of every month, we run a more comprehensive, what we call our monthly market wrap. Uh, quarterly, we have a chart book, which is a really detailed 50 plus page uh, synopsis of everything that we're looking at for, uh, economically uh, across regions. And then uh, I write letters uh, as a CIO every probably six weeks or so where I just sit down and, and try to put down on paper in, in plain English what it is we're thinking, what our concerns are, the areas of the market we're, we're looking at. Oftentimes use it as an opportunity to foreshadow a little bit um, so clients aren't uh, confused or taken aback when they do see changes in the portfolio. If they think back to some of the uh, communication that we've offered, 
we've talked about those things. Right. And you know, they'll say, oh yeah, I remember when you were talking about you liked gold or you liked emerging markets, you know. So it may be six or eight weeks after the fact when we put that trade on, but uh, the client knows that we've been looking at it. Right. And they know our views about it. And then we post everything to our, our website and make sure it's there. Uh, more recently, we've, we've uh, taken a, a video approach and uh, we've shot some short videos. We call it Take 5. The idea is to, uh, in the course of just two to three minutes, try to touch on three, four, or five different topics that are uh, on our front page. Um, things that we're thinking about, things that we're concerned about, things that we're excited about. Um, and we share that, uh, again, just emailing that out to uh, try to hit a little bit different uh, segment of, uh, of, our, of our client market that, that prefers right. video over, say, written reports. Well, you've given them a lot of different ways to, to stay in touch. Yeah, we try. Now, just to, just to wrap this up, um, typically managers who are using ETFs talk about cost efficiency. They talk about tax efficiency that comes from the ETF. I'm curious, as a manager, as you focus on asset allocation, are there things that you're doing or you're able to do to even get more out of that, just in, in the way that you structure the asset allocation in terms of either cost efficiency, keeping costs mm -hmm. low, mm -hmm. or tax efficiency? Yeah, great question. I mean, we're, we're very conscious of frictional costs. Every time you touch a portfolio, it costs money, whether it's a bid-ask spread, whether it's a transaction cost on a trade. Uh, so one of the things we take a lot of pride in is that with our core satellite strategies, we can express our core view and understand that's about 80% of the portfolio, mm -hmm. the average expense ratio, and there's about 15 basis points. So again, on a cap-weighted basis, you can have 80% of your portfolio invested across multiple asset classes for 15 basis points a year. Yeah. Now, when we think tactically, uh, cost isn't as much of a factor, but it's certainly on the list of things we examined when we looked at the ETFs that we want to use to express a tactical view. So costs, frictional costs are very important. Uh, if, if clients aren't aware of it, if you do the math at the end of a year, you'll be amazed at how much gets, can get eaten up in, in, in taxes sure. or uh, trading costs or the underlying expense ratios. So if you're not conscious of those things, uh, they can sneak up and, and take a big chunk out of your return. Well, thanks a lot, Larry. You've been a great partner with us in our effort to try to educate and help financial advisors understand indexing and ETFs. And I appreciate the partnership that you've, you've given us over the last few years. Great. Well, we appreciate S&P's indices and everything they do, your leaders in the space. Well, thanks. And Larry, he's, he's spoken about some basic ways that he and his firm are using index-based approaches to achieve mm -hmm. asset allocation or specific strategies which are purpose-built. If you want to hear Larry talk about more advanced ideas and purpose-based asset allocation, please look for our next video interview. And as always, for those of you that want to learn more about how indexing works, please take a look at our website. That's www.spdji.com. Thanks and have a great day.